<coughs> okay, that's very good. It is to do with the burning of the food and converting into body tissues and all about control burning. Transformation. Transformation, that's a great word. Transformation is a great word because when you mix the flour and eggs and sugar and make a brownie out of it, yeah, means there's no egg left in there, there's no flour left in there, there's no sugar left in there, it has become brownie, isn't it? So brownie, you can't get the egg out of it, you can't get anything else out of it, it has all intertwined to become something totally different. So it is transformation which is irreversible irreversible that's important so you don't want to really eat baby carrots and bring the baby carrots out after three hours of digestion okay there's something really wrong if you do that <laughs> what else <laughs> what else do you understand that why heat processes are really really important what about like tejas and the kind of the fire in your mind yeah it is it is to do with everything okay everything to do with that because you have to listen to me and digest it metabolize it and convert it and retain some part of it otherwise it's just deflecting things so tejas is all about heat processes which is responsible for cooking transformation conversion heat process why do you need to really respect the heat processes in the body in general in the physiology so if the Agni is low, then uh, Ama will form, and that is the beginning of disease. Yeah, but Anand, tell me one thing, that we are still talking about Agni in the sense of digestive fire, mm -hmm. okay? I want you to think and scratch your head a little bit more about all the heat processes involved in the physiology, mm -hmm. okay? Everything, whether it is... In, in the synaptic gaps, whether it is to do with all the biochemistry, biochemical transformations in the body, it is all about, about a molecule converting itself into something else. And there is a little bit of process of heat involved in every chemical reaction going on in the body. And when you talk about heat process, it is about sluggish functioning of the physiology where everything else is not affecting properly. When you say you have hypothyroid or something like that. So you're talking about the quality of your thyroxine is so weak and low and dull that you are unable to actually support your gastric system or digestive fire and you are having a sluggish metabolic activity because of the low thyroid. So that's what you're doing, isn't it? You're understanding one heat process which is affecting one little area of your digestion. But there are millions of heat processes in the body going on, millions. And they're all a part of this Agni, what we call it. The word ignite comes from Agni. Okay? Ignite, ignition, the root word is Agni. And when you talk about Agni as a heat process is everywhere in the body, it's the biochemical transformation of every little thing. Every little thing happening everywhere. And there are millions of chemical reactions going on in the body. They are all depending upon the heat processes. When your body is absolutely cold, 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 when you are frozen, when you have hypothermia, it cannot function that. It cannot function. If you are stuck at a glacier somewhere, slowly you are going to be even more cold and dead because the body is unable to function and you are not able to maintain the temperature in the body in order for that conversion. So, <coughs> Anything else you want to add? What did you say? Uh, everything else to say. <laughs> yeah. Already covered it. Okay. Heat process. Yeah, same way. It's hard to come up with something new. Means look at all these ancient cultures, okay? They were, they were doing all this worshipping of the fire, dancing around the fire, doing the yajna, offering things to the fire. It just a simple, logical, synonymous way of, of understanding, respecting sun, respecting solar energy, respecting heat, and maintaining and worshipping that fire in the body. Every emotion you generate, every thought you generate has to have that sense of fire, energy, conversion, ATP, whatever you call it. This is all release of energy, okay? And everything when we talk about Agni, in, in, at this level you need to understand that it is much more than Agni and Ama. 
okay it is much more than agni and ama and what do you need to do in order to actually start allowing yourselves to be burning all the cylinders and firing it in all probable ways everything what we are uh, having currently in terms of food and diet and things like that if if those things are not respecting that fire how many types of agni do you know 13, 13. what are the 13 types of agni Mm-hmm. Okay, so how many types of Bhuta Agnis? Five. Five basic elemental Agni, then seven, and one Jatra Agni. Basically, nothing would exist in our world without the fire. Right. That's correct. Because of the sun and... That's correct. But what they take it to the next level, understanding that whatever you take in, whatever you try to burn, should also have the fire. Okay? Because it's, not, it's important that you have your digestive fire burning properly. But what you ingest should have the basic elemental fire in that food itself. Otherwise, you will not be able to do that. So when you open a canned food, or a packaged food, or a processed food, or a dead cereal, or anything like that, which has been processed and kept lifeless, without any Agni, any Prana in that, okay, it is going to burden your Agni and create more chance that it will create uh, sluggish digestive fire because that takes more energy to burn and your body is unable to get the goodness from that because that food itself was missing its agni, missing its fire. Is that right? And how do we understand this? Because one of the things that we commonly understand through modern medicine is whether the food has enough enzymatic activity. What does the word enzyme mean? Something that catalyzes the reaction. Great. So it has to have a catalytic qualities to it. So it should expedite the burning. So it should simply have the Agni to burn itself. Okay? So when you eat food which is made in nature, made by nature, made by God basically, it has enough enzymatic processes in the food to allow it to burn. But the same pineapple that you are eating or the black beans when you are soaking it and cooking it, if they are stored and canned and uh, trashed in a way where it's left good for nothing because it will not have the necessary energy into that. Most of the foods, what we are buying, apart from the produce section in a supermarket, fall into that category which is devoid of any enzymatic activity in that food at all. So, when you are having a missing link in terms of food, it's very easy that you are creating armor. So, when we talk about the 13 types of Agni, you are looking at Agni, whether it, even that quality of the Agni, does it really have the quality of prana in that, whether it is water, whether it is um, uh, oil, whether it is any solid food or liquid food, it should have that elemental structure because that elemental structure is the one which is going to have that enzymatic balance to convert itself into the tissue fires. These tissue fires or dhatu agni are the ones which are going to take the information from the food and convert itself into themselves, into their body tissues. And then, ultimately, it all depends upon the strength of your Jataragni. So, the point one more time I would like to make here is that <clears throat> we need to come up with solutions to yourself and to others that how do we enhance the state of Agni in their life. Okay? Write it down as a question. How, what are the things that you are going to advise people to enhance the quality of Agni in their life. Their ability to burn cleanly, convert itself, metabolism, conversion, transformation, how you are going to enhance that aspect in their life. Because body is one thing, that's very one little part of Agni also. 
there is there is a mental armor they call it isn't it because it is coming from certain things that you haven't processed it or you haven't really digested it well and it's stuck into your nervous system without without really having a way to to convert itself or burn itself or purge it out there's something called as karmic armor which is even worse because it's coming from something what you have done in the past life or whatever you are bringing has happened in the past life so uh, in general uh, it's a it's a degree of yuckiness and toxicity which comes because of your inability to have that sense of agni what are the benefits of yoga It's called as yoga agni, isn't it? It is called as yoga agni. It's the yoga of fire. It's technically, it's the yoga which allows and enlivens your agni to burn your karmic limitations, to burn your mental state, how you look at your life. The biggest benefit of yoga in medicine is not that you have a Hollywood body because of that. It is because you will create a state in which you will create much more resilience, much more flexibility, much more easiness, much more proper selections of the food which are healthier, vibrant, full of vitality and things like that. So when you talk about yoga, fire, energy, anything like that, it has to have the ability to change and spontaneously burn and create uh, a degree of lightness, clarity, conversion. Does it make sense? Good. <clears throat> so we are talking about Kaya Chikitsa and the core basis of Kaya Chikitsa in whichever way you look at it is restoring the Agnis, restoring the cellular fires, restoring the, the ability for your body to, to start burning and lightening things. One of the biggest trends what we see in the current um, topic of weight loss is called as um, calories. What does calorie mean? Calorie? Um, the amount of energy that it would take to burn the food that you do. That's very good. The amount of energy that it will take, so the amount of agni it will take for you to burn, isn't it? Calorie is heat, kaliyante. So, calorie is the unit of heat that will require to do that. So, it is boiling down to one simple fact that what is the quality of the calories that it will take the energy for you to burn certain food. And you are looking at the foods in terms of calories that how much energy is going to take for me to digest this big steak what I'm eating or a bowl of popcorn I'm eating. So, in a way, you're trying to convert uh, you, are, you, are, you are trying to judge your conversion ability. And what are the different types of Agni? Different types, different states of Agni according to body constitutions? Manda, Sama, Tikshna. Come on guys. Vishama, good. You are very smart, all of you. Manda is to do with what kind of body constitution? Kapha. Tikshna is to do with? Pitta. Vishama is to do with? Vata. So, now put the same calorie understanding in here that if my Agni is Manda, okay, so it simply means that if I am eating a 2000 calorie food, okay, and if I give it to three people, Okay, this person will burn it very quickly and will be ready for a meal or a snack immediately. This person may burn it, may not burn it properly, but this person is going to take a hell lot of time to burn that thing. So, I would, I would reduce this to maybe 1500 for this person, maybe 2500 for this person and maybe 1800 or 1700 so that it doesn't really create a thing where you need to start respecting your Agni and looking at your food and see how much you can handle it at a given time. Okay, so I'm not talking about you start counting calories. I 